Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, you recognise this little thing behind me, and today I'm going to do a few more bits to it that I wasn't actually intending to um, to get on with, to be honest with you. There's a few bits I still need to do, like MOT wise, before I can go for MOT, which is the main one is just a, a fog light switch. That, once I've done the, the fog light switch, everything inside works and it can go for MOT. I've been for the brakes, and yeah. On that subject, the brakes, they, um, they're interesting. When you go to uh, take the uh, brake pads out, you get a bit of friction material, and a bit of friction material, and a, uh, yeah, delaminated back bit. And uh, these brake pads are, see, the other bit's delaminated, which is those two bits there, and that was one on each side. So um, these things have definitely been brake pads too long, that's for certain, because they uh, were useless. And also, at the same time, every single one of the sliders was completely nutty screwed, which I've got here. That one came out and it was already bent. Uh, this one, I had to beat 10 bells of um, buggery out of it to get it out. And once again, that one bent, so I replaced all them at the same time. Uh, and now the brakes on the thing are working perfectly fine, so we're all good with that. So there's another job out of the way, so that stops my sticking handbrake and the rest of it. But today, I'm going to get on to um, sorting out something which I've mentioned about quite a few times. These seats in the front, yeah, they're, um, they're not bad seats, don't get me wrong. They're BMW seats, but the problem you've got with these seats is they're offset mounting. So uh, what I mean by that is where the runner sits here, on a normal seat would sit like here. So they're offset mounted, so they always automatically have to be set in a different place than what you would do. If we go round to the, the driver's side, this one, as you sit in the sitting position, your sitting position is where you would normally sit. You're not, you're actually sat here. So you can imagine where the pedals and steering wheel are. Yeah, it's well and truly not centralised, as you can see. Middle of the steering wheel, yeah, nowhere near the middle of the seat. And... Uh, Half the issue, as I was just trying to say, they're offset. So, one moment. Right, just put the light back on for a minute. I'll get rid of those flashy bits, the fluffy bits in a minute. This would have dust in the air. But as you can see, there's not a lot of room between the seat and the, the base. So, these seats are not really suitable to go in something like this because you can't get the seat in position. Completely and utterly right, which is a pain in the ass. And it feels horrible to drive because you're sat on the piss, basically. You're sat with your legs off to one side and your hands are off to one side. It's just not a comfortable place to sit with those seats. So what I've got is, I had lurking around in the unit like I do. I've got bits of this that, and everything else everywhere. Okay, call me up for order if you want, I don't really care. Got a set of uh, Focus ST Recaros. Nice seats, lovely, lovely seats. I've just had them washed because they were filthy. Oh, I said had them washed, just had the fronts washed because they were filthy where they've been stored. So we got those, which as you can see, I don't know if you're going to pick it up. You've got one runner, two runners. They sit bang on centralised, and the runner spacing is about right. So we're going to get them to fit onto those bases. Just behind the back of there, which you're not going to see, there's another single base. So we can get rid of what someone done with a, with a double base. As you can see, the double base there, they did that and put that on top, which I don't like. So we're getting rid of that. That'll go back to a single base, and that'll be fitting better. And also, in the same time, Picked up some, a set of T4 front seats, admittedly. I'm going to turn them into a triple for the back. So I can, if I don't want to, get through the rest of it. And we're also going to put some flooring back down on the bottom down there. So uh, I'm going to start ripping out these seats. And then we'll get on from there. While I wait for the seats in the back to dry, uh, I'm going to do my usual. I want to take 60 mil out of each of the bottom of the, the seat bases so the seat, seat sit lower. Because T4 seat bases are quite bases as in the base of the seat you sit on is quite thin and all aftermarket seats are quite high so i like to take 60 mil out of both the bases and then you get a nice low sitting area and it's lovely and comfortable to drive that's exactly what i've done in my uh, the burgundy van and i've done it in quite a few other vans and it just gives you a nice sitting position so as i said once i'm waiting for those seats to dry in the back i crack on and get this lot out we'll get them all cut down uh Bases cut down properly, and then we can work out how we're going to get them seats to fit. So, uh, hopefully, guys, you've stayed past my waffle and the rest of it. Uh, if you have, I will uh, initiate again now 
if you do like the content on build it they're doing this the rest of it and you like following along hit the subscribe button don't cost you guys nothing and it goes a long way to help us out so enough of my waffle i'm gonna get on to some of the action i saved so stay tuned so i guess before i can start doing anything i suppose these seats better come out and uh yeah they're proving to be a little bit uh difficult because there's well i say difficult some of the bolts are missing but then there's other ones that were completely the wrong ones and they were pain in the backside but i got there in the end Right, so if them seats are now out, which are over there, they weigh an absolute ton. Actually, I'll probably have to show you a bit more about how I mentioned about this offset. Now, right, there's your centre of your seat. As I say, I'm holding the camera directly in the middle. As you can see, it's miles out to one side. Instead of, where's where one runner is, you just have another one in line with there. So you can see it's absolutely miles out. You've got a good probably three inches at least out to one side hence why they're no good for what i want uh what i've done as you just probably noticed i put one bit of tape across i normally use 50 mil tape but i ain't got none so much use normal flipping masking tape so it adds up to 50 mil anyway but but one strip across that's the bit that i'm gonna keep them well back on then i put the other two strips along and then take that one off that then gives me the straight line of where i need to cut which means I'm cutting the same amount off both sides, the same as measuring and messing around. That's the easiest way to um, to do that one. So I'll get these cut off and um, I'll show you them once I've welded them back on again because it's just a simple process. Cut them off, clean them up, weld them back on. So out comes that lovely uh, wheel of death again. And yeah, as you notice, I have got a visor on for once. Makes a change, doesn't it? Yeah, I've had enough of all the complaints and moaning and the rest of it, but it probably won't last. And then, yeah, this guy's welding, but it does help you turn the gas on, doesn't it, you absolute idiot? I love watching these back and forth, seeing all my cock-ups and stuff, and no doubt you guys love watching my cock-ups as well. And it's just a case of welding, welding, and a bit more welding, and uh, making your weld as strong as you possibly can. So uh, I'll leave you with this bit of footage and uh, have a bit of music to go with it, I guess. So that's that seat all nicely uh, welded up. That ain't coming off again. All I've got to do is make two little square plates up for the front for both sides and weld those in, and that'll stop the front bank stuff and down, which I will do, but I always do that after I've mounted the seat to the base because it just gives you a little extra room to be able to get bolts through and stuff for mounting the seats and stuff if you need to. And I like doing it that way because the base is going to come off and get painted anyway. I finish everything off like that. That's just how I am and how I do things. So now that one's done, I'll get the other one done off camera. And I can get both the bases done and we can then start messing around seeing the best way to get the, the seats to mount. So, uh, yeah, it's one of those ones now, it's, you just got to work out the best way you can possibly do it. I realised that there were some little bits on the seats that needed to poke through to make it so the seat slides and the rest of it still. So I couldn't just do the way of just bolting it on or, any, or welding it on, whichever way. So you've seen those little bits I cut in the vice a minute ago. Just made some little tiny spaces up, which I think were about 5 mil like deep there might be a little bit more but there weren't a lot more than that well done to the base to just basically make some these little space and stuff and it just made it so the seat base would um sit and the sliders will still work well as they're intended i suppose and it's just yeah trying to get in the right place uh yeah it's always a little bit difficult and stuff but you get there once you get in the right place you can clamp it in place and then you just move on to the next bit i suppose and um, I've decided to weld them to the base. I do this quite often because 
on the T4, the seat base, once you cut them down like that, is so small, you might as well make it so the you just unbolt it from the base, it actually has a, the four bolts that go into the floor, which is just as easy. And once again, I'm busy playing with the um, welding gas because I'm pretty much running out. I just and just had enough to um, get this job done, but I had to turn the regulator up just to try and get as much gas out of it as I possibly can. And back in the seats go. So that was a bit of fun, but we got them in there. Right, oh, they're in, so I suppose I'm going to test them, shall we? See what the, uh, what the sitting position is like. Well, straight away, stuff bang, smack bang in front of the steering wheel. Oh, I can still go down. Even further, I've got the adjustment on this seat. Oh, that's done. That's a lot better. What does that one do? That's the Yeah, I'm a short ass, I know. Oh, that's lovely. So much nicer sitting position. A little wind on that. I ain't bit too much. Yeah, that there, I'm sat absolutely smack bang in front of the steering wheel, pedals in the right place. So, um, I think that's job done. And, bonus of it, they look a million times better. And we all know how, how much we all love um, Recaros. Recaros are just the, yeah, the daddy of seats as far as I'm concerned. But, there you are, I'll them in. So I suppose um, let's move on to the next bit, shall we? Alright guys, before I start actually um, attacking the, the back bit, let me change this little thing. Which, as we all know, I'm not long to put the dash back in, but the one that was in here was faulty, it was causing me all sorts of issues. So this one, once again, good old eBay saves the game, and um, that was quite a funny one. You get the, the like, you order it, because uh, of my name that's on. Uh, my eBay account. Someone sent me a message asking it was me, and it happened to be a viewer. So, uh, yeah, cheers, mate. Appreciate that one. So, let's get these uh, vents out and get this uh, changed over. Now, I guess it's going to be an absolute arse on it because I've got to put it back together, and I hate taking things apart and put it back together. But life is life. It's quite an easy job to change these over. Vents out, panel out the bottom. Once you got that out, undo the, the screws there, and I, it's pretty much there. Alright, where, where are the screws? There they are, that's the ones. Duh. Once you got that out, there's your. Uh, Little switch. As you can see, a little bit faulty that one. I did put it back together a little bit, but it didn't kind of work too well. And yeah, he's back in and it uh, works. A little bit more fiddly than I wanted because I, the other case was all broken, so it was a pain in the ass to get to get to go out. And I didn't really care about breaking that one, so. Okay, so I'll plonk everything back together, reverse off. How you How you have it all? To be honest, you, I wish all jobs were this simple, but they're uh, they're not. If all jobs were this simple, I'd be very very happy, man. But unfortunately, they're not, and I've got one of them lovely jobs I don't want to be doing. Hence me doing this, which is what I've got to get on to next. I've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off because I absolutely hate cutting wood for the bed in the back. And yeah, anybody got an ashtray look around? I need one of them as well. But for now, I'll just wedge that in there again. And that's that part, now done. And this thing is now actually MOTable. What I've got to say when I put the seats in, the seat belt buckles that are, are already on here from the, the Focus ST actually work on the, uh, the VW seat belt, uh, seat belt. So I saved me a job with that one. So uh, yeah, this thing's now ready for MOT. So uh, I'll get on with doing some flooring and stuff. And uh, yeah, really enjoyable job that. It really isn't, and I really don't want to be doing it. But life is life, isn't it? We want to do jobs we don't want to do at times. And that is definitely one of them. So uh, don't be judging me when I do that, because yeah, I'm crap at it. But life is life. Let's get on with it. 
Right, so let's get on to this horrible job that I hate doing. We've all got them, guys. We've all got jobs we hate doing, but we've just got to do them. And the, um, this is one. As I just said a minute ago, this, yeah, don't judge me. What I always use, uh, some guys don't use this, they use ply. I'd rather use OSB or what, uh, OSB? Oh, whatever the hell they call it. I can't even remember the names of the stuff anymore. Sterling board, that's what I was thinking. I find that sterling board, if it gets wet, doesn't blow up and go all that shape and the rest of it. And it makes a real nice base to put whatever flooring you're going to put on top of it. Nice and sturdy. And it doesn't cause any, any issues, as I said, when it, if it, well, if or when it gets wet. Because we all know it's going to get wet when you get in and out with wet feet and the rest of it. So this is what I always use and I've never had an issue with it before. Uh, so it's just literally just chucked in at the moment. As you can see, you're always going to need two 8x4 sheets, whether you like it or not. Or you piece bits in and then just, yeah, you do whatever way you want to do it. I've chucked it in there in place now. I need to notch out round the, the footwell, same at the back, same at the front. Then I can slide it over to this side to get it into the right place. Then I'll scribe the bottom of the, the step and then it should fit across to that side and I can put the step and stuff back in. And then the other side, I put the board in the same way, scribe around the other way, push it across, mark both sides, cut a nice long straight line right along the fence of it and that should fit in there. I say should, this is me doing it. So it might not. So, uh, yeah, I've had fun and games with these a few times, hence why I normally end up using two complete sheets, because I'm a perfectionist, I like it right, but I don't always get it right. And so, yeah, we're all human. Right, enough of my waffle, I think. I suppose I better get attacking this, aren't I? Yay, I'll let you guys follow along and see all of my screw-ups I make, because there will be some, and I'll let you have a good laugh about it. find that whenever you try to do stuff the pens you got have always run out just because just because you know what i mean it's yeah it does my editing i don't know if it does any of your guys editing but no it does my bloody edit now I've sorted my pen situation out, I can now uh, sit here and actually start making more markings and stuff like that. It's just measuring, marking, getting all your bits in the right place. So hopefully when you cut it once, you cut it once. You do end up trimming a little bit more. So my advice is cut it so it's, you still need to take more off if you can. And then at least that way you haven't overcut it because as we know with wood, it's not as easy as metal. You can't just weld it back together, which is why I hate wood. I'm going to see if I actually get away with cutting it, it's actually in here. So you can take it in and out again. And the reason I say that is because I've completely and utterly shafted my neck and I can hardly move. So I struggled to actually lift this in here, hence why I did it off camera. So uh, yeah, let's see if I can cut this out and out of here and see, see how it goes, shall we? It, well, out of here, in here. Idiot. And uh, let's see if I can actually do it in here. I'm hoping I can. I think I've just managed to prop it up enough to, to do it. And then I can just slide it back as a forward, make my life easier. So I'm going to stick you guys on time lapse for a minute as you get a hint of what I'm up to. And uh, see how we go. Oh, there we go. It's in. My oh, ball ache. I hate that job. And I've lost another pen. Surprise, surprise. Any of you lot see where I put my pen? Well, if you do, stick it in the comments. Let me know where I put it because I can't find it for love nor money. It's not under the van, not in my pockets. But as you can see, all fits quite neatly. And I'm quite happy with how that is. And you've seen what I meant by 
scribe it right, do one side, then scribe out around the outside, cut the line, and it gets a quite a nice finish. And also, round by my door, it all fits in there quite nicely. I always leave a little tiny gap along that front edge because I like that little gap just in case I want to run any wires along from this side round. I always leave a tiny gap so I can just tuck my wires in and make it neater. There's my little trick, which I always use. So that just needs screwing down now. And then we can get on with fitting them seats over there. So we're getting there now. Right, I've had enough of this. This is getting right on my um, nerves. I'm feeling like crap anyway. And uh, for some reason, I keep seeing to be breaking drill bits and stuff like that. So um, I'm just gonna do this off camera. You just get the hint. I'm having a absolute bloody nightmare. So after um, more, more board ache and a lot of snap drill bits, and I ain't got a clue why the hell they're snapping. I never ever had this problem before. That floor is now, uh, now secured and it ain't going nowhere. But as you can see, we're pretty much getting there. Go over to the list of stuff, which I don't think I've actually showed you before. But yeah, we've got most of the stuff marked off. Anything's left on it. Under seal the underneath, which I'll do once I've uh, got the seats and stuff in there, because I want to under seal where the spreader plates go and stuff. MOT, carpet rear floor, and rear seat bolts. So we're pretty much done on that one. So it's like, there's not an awful lot more left to do on this. And, uh, a couple of days time to go off for MOT, but don't know whether or not I mentioned whether it passed or not in this video or not. I might do, it depends on how long it takes me to finish off this bit in the back and how well I feel to actually get on and do it. Because at the moment I'm feeling like death warmed up. I've ended up with that horrible long COVID crap from when I got COVID just after Christmas and I feel like crap. And I've also, as I said earlier in the video, done my neck in as well. So I'm absolutely feeling like death at the moment. And I'm struggling like mad but i'm getting on with it because i one i want to and two i want to give content for you guys and stuff because it's only fair that i get these things that i've started finished so now we're going to move on to the rear seats all i've done so far is drawn a line across between the wheel arch to the wheel arch so i've got somewhere to measure off which is equal so i can get these seats to sit right and level and stuff so i can measure off them get the base in the right place drill the holes uh then bolt them in with spreader plates You've got to use spreader plates underneath because if you don't, in an accident, it will just literally rip straight out the floor. The bolts haven't got enough on them, even if you just put washers on, have not got enough on them to stop them pulling out of the floor. So you always put in spreader plates. With the spreader plates, it stops them pulling through so quickly. They will pull through, but it takes, it, it takes a lot longer for them to pull through, so it takes a lot more force for them to pull through. So um, let's get these two seats in here. And um, yeah, see whether we can measure where we're gonna drill and stuff. And yeah, the wind's getting right up and lifting my roof up and down again, like usual. But uh, yeah, I got, just got distracted, sorry. Um, yeah, let's get them in, get them measured, see if we can get some dr holes drilled the rest of it. And um, yeah, go from there. Sorry guys, I forgot to press record. You might have a few little bits float around the air because I got the light on and stuff on them just so you can pick them up better. But uh, there they are in place. I used uh, the line at the back to measure as I said, that line there to measure so I got them in the right place. I've had to get the happy compromise because, of course, being seats from the front of the van, that one's very slightly out. But it's nothing major. If you really wanted to, you could actually get two doubles across here. I just measured it, and it would actually fit. So you could, in theory, make it six either. But I'm quite happy with just being in the way that is like that. I wanted those seats to be able to fold flat because you can use it as a van then as well. But... If, if any time I did sell it, or if I did put it up for sale straight away, someone could change it around again. I'm just trying to make it more usable just for now. If I really, really wanted to, I'd build a camper interior for it. And I'm not saying I'm not going to, but at the moment, I just want to get this thing looking good, inside and out, and usable. So now we've got those seats like that. Uh, uh, like, let's sky around all the little holes and stuff, which I'm not going to be able to pick up on camera very well. Uh, and then we drill some holes, and we're um, see if we can get the things mounted, shall we? Well guys, I was really not having a very good day today. Uh, all marks, the rest of it. Then I've gone to realise I didn't go to the flipping hardware store this morning to get some nuts and bolts. So I had to go rummaging through me nuts and bolts pile 
and just found some temporary ones just for now. But it'll work for now. And that's for spreader plates. That's what I meant by a spreader plate. Basically, uh, I would use a minimum of a two inch square underneath. This just goes underneath and stops it pulling through the floor. So let's try and get some of these drilled. And hopefully something goes right today. So at the moment, nothing has. And I'm really starting to um, lose enthusiasm to be bothered today at the moment. bolts because even the bolts I found were, weren't long enough so let's go get some new ones shall we I can't be bothered to mess around hunting for anymore so much easier just drive down the road and get some new ones it's really no wonder why my van's so dirty all the time isn't it? this is why uh, my show vans get covered in crap and get used all the time look at the state of these roads I drove down every single day without fail but here's what it is so uh, about 10 minutes down the road I can actually get some new bloody bolts and then get back can't I Try again and actually see if we actually get this job actually done and like dusted and make a mark off the list because I bloody well hope so. Right, I'm going to disappear underneath there. Can't really film that bit, so uh, I'll be back in a minute, guys. There we go, they're in. Uh, I'll plonk the seat belts on it, got three lap belts in the back, so they're all good. But if I can, I'll try and show you what I mean by spreader plates. There you go. As you can see, just there. That there is your spreader plate. As you can see, that isn't going to pull out the ground very, very easily. So there's, what, four in the front and four in the back of them. So that's them done. Let me get back up again. There's a drop everything out of my pockets, as per usual. But yeah, there's those. So we can go across to this little list over here and, uh, Mark a couple more bits off, I think. So we can go just like that's done. That's done. So all we got left on it under seal, carpet the floor, and MOT. I've got to try and find some carpet for it. I might go and have a look a little bit later. If I can find what I want to put in the back, then I'll put it in this video. If I can't, then I'll just do it at some other time and finish it off. But yeah, there's those bits done, so uh, let me uh, work out what else I need to get done, and I'll be back in a minute. Ah! I went, decided yesterday to go around a couple of carpet places, see if I find some offcuts. I was looking to do black and blue checks in here, but I couldn't find nothing black and blue anywhere, or carpet tires that are blue, to be honest with you. So I found some black and white checks. I think that'll look quite good. Nice little cheap bit of a lino, and it's the, the texture stuff that's got extra grip on it. So, my next mission is going to get that in here and uh, all done. I am, um, I said I'm useless to doing this wood. I'm even more useless doing this. So, I am going to stick you on time lapse because um, I'll probably cock it up to be honest with you, but I'm going to do my best and uh, see what I can end up getting done and see what it looks like. But yeah, as you can see, seats are already out. Uh, I've already got the holes and stuff, so what I can do is basically once I've done this, I can go underneath and basically just re drill the hole back through, and then the seats can bolt back down on top of it. So, uh, yeah. I'm not going to um, stick it down yet until I've finished done the inside of the van, but for now, I'm going to cut it all down to shape so I can basically roll it back up and roll them um, like whenever I want to do it. And uh, yeah, job done. So let's uh, get cracking on that, I suppose. So, to be honest with you, there's no point me trying to talk over this because all I do is give you some real crap information because all I do is wing it and this is exactly what I'm doing now, I think. I haven't got a clue. I'm just useless at it. And as I said, don't judge me on some of the stuff I do. I just do the best I can like anybody else can do. And it's it's just a fact of trying to enjoy yourself the best you can as, you, as you're getting your project done. We've all got to do stuff we don't like in the projects. And as long as it turn out all right, we've all done well. That's actually turned out better than what I thought it was going to do. It's not too bad, I've got my step to go put back in there and I've got my screws to put back in there. But this is why I never 
do the wood up foot past there because I always like to cover the material right to the edge. I'll just put a finishing strip along the back edge of that. And that looks quite smart, to be honest with you. Once the seats are back in and stuff, that brightens the interior up and it's finished off. And yeah, it's, as I said, it's the texture stuff, so it's nice and, uh, nice and grippy and stuff. So that should do the job as well. So I'm just going to get the seats back in. I'll show you what it's like, it's like when it's all back together. Well, there you go. All in, uh, done, the rest of it, a bit dirty, you just need to wipe it out and stuff. But there, as you can see, I think that looks really smart. The steps in and stuff, I've just got to put some packers underneath here to pack them out like you always do. Or you put the, the deeper one in, which that one's in good condition, so all I'm going to do is put some packers under it, so when you stand on it, it doesn't, doesn't bend or anything. But flooring's all in, seats are in, they're not going anywhere, the rest of it. Also managed to find out that the BMW seats that was in the front of the van... The headrest fit so i've now got black matching headrest the rest of it and around the back here's uh got my little trim in there back in and stuff and as you can see finish off nicely just need to put my, my finishing caps on the edge of these which i just got to go and get because i forgot to get them this morning but other than that i think we're actually getting there oh and i put a bit of carpet on the wheel arches which i'll get around to at some point it's not the end of the world so uh yeah there we go and stuff so so this thing i just gotta go off for mat so um a couple of days' time it's in for MOT, so I've got all the work done prior to that. I can't see anything it's going to fail on, so fingers crossed it passes. Uh, so, for you guys, it's going to be a little click of the magic fingers of YouTube magic. But for me, as I said, a couple of days' time. So, uh, yeah, I'll be back in there. Uh... Oh, guys, just leaving the MOT session center. And I um, have to say, we got one of these, which means we passed. And we passed with no advisories whatsoever. So, good day today. So uh, let me get back to the unit and uh, I'll show you the last few bits I finished off on her. And uh, yeah, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So let's head on back and uh, I'll see you in a minute. So there we go, guys. I think as you can agree, it actually looks pretty smart inside there. The floor looks good with the seats, the rest of it. All needs to go clean up and stuff, but I'm not bothered about that. That's my next mission. And I, I enjoy cleaning, so I'm looking forward to that. Front seats look absolutely perfect. They drive lovely. And I got bored again, as usual, and made myself a, another gear stick. Yeah, I like cider, so I make myself a little gear stick ascensions and bosses and the rest of it and make them work. But yeah, all uh, all in, all MOTs. And um, yeah, I think you agree. This one's turned out very, very nice and stuff. And you just gave yourself a, a little bonus episode on, uh, on this van. So uh, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing at the moment next. I'm still trying to buy something as a next project to um, to get done. So if any of you guys know of anything, then just hit me up. Uh, email and everything's in the in the description and stuff. Hit me up on that or Instagram or anything else if you know of anything that you would like to see on the channel and it's a project. So um, yeah, hit me up with that one. Uh, if you've liked the um, the little video and stuff I've done today, uh, please consider subscribing. It's totally and utterly free for you guys. And please hit that like button. And until the next one, guys, peace out.